have your head in the club. Good evening, I'm Barbara Walters. Hugh Downs is on assignment, and this is 2020. From ABC News, around the world and into your home, the stories that touch your life with Hugh Downs and Barbara Walters. This is 2020. Tonight, crime in America. In your neighborhood, is there any way to stop it? You can run, but you can't hide. You have to face it. She was a victim. Just move it! Now, she's fighting back. I'm out there to make sure nobody else is a victim. She patrols at night, challenging drug dealers, gang members, places that attract prostitutes. They're disturbing us, they're disturbing our business. We don't like that. Tom Gerald and a woman who's fed up with fear. She's out there on the front lines, taking back the streets. He's in a class by himself, a media megastar with millions of fans, millions of dollars, and talent on loan from God. The wildly successful talk show host, Rush Limbaugh. He's the devil. Barbara Walters explores his public image. I am a threat to a specific group of people in this, in this country known as liberals. And his private life. I am perceived as hating. Do you? Where he came from and where he's going. You want to ever be in politics? The man America loves and loves to hate. Rush Limbaugh. Plus, the riots in Los Angeles were shocking. So were the latest verdicts. The mob that attacked Reginald Denny found another victim that night. He was brutally beaten and publicly humiliated. They sprayed this black graffiti stuff all over his private part. Did justice serve this innocent man? The only good thing that came out of this is that my dad's alive, but he's sick. He's very sick. Catherine Cryer with the story of Fidel Lopez, robbed of his health, his business, and the American dream. A year and a half after the L.A. riots, he's still the forgotten victim. Those stories tonight, November 5th, 1993, after this brief message. So when Grandpa retired... The bestseller list? How did he do it? What's he like away from the microphones? Rush, as you've never seen him after this. Day one, when California banned assault weapons, one manufacturer found a way to get this weapon out on the street. Very deadly, very legal. How could this happen? Forrest Sawyer on day one, Monday at 8, 7 central. He's been called the most dangerous man in America. So why do millions of people love to listen to Rush Limbaugh? America's number one talk show host talks to Barbara Walters about his public image, his private life. When 2020 continues, after this, from our ABC stations. Even though the Honda Accord has been one of the best-selling cars in America, we thought it was time to make a few changes. Like more interior space, do it. This is Eyewitness News Update. Good evening, friends. At Eyewitness News tonight at 10, we will find out if anyone has been charged in the shooting death of a Pasadena police officer killed during a raid this morning. A child custody case in Florida could have widespread implications. It was tonight at 10. From ABC News, 2020 continues. Once again, Barbara Walters. He's the man they listen to at the White House, even though they seldom agree with him. He's the man millions listen to across the country. In fact, he's America's number one talk show host. People can't seem to get enough of him. He's a star of radio and television. His first book called The Way Things Ought to Be is at the top of the bestseller list, has been for ages, it seems. His new book, published just yesterday, is titled See, I Told You So, and that's already a guaranteed hit. His name, Rush Limbaugh. If you didn't know him before, you will after tonight. Because this man who loves to talk, although rarely about himself, is going to do just that. Who is Rush Limbaugh, and does a private man fit the public image? Talent on loan from God. Rush Limbaugh in New York, the doctor of democracy. 
Coming to you from high atop the EIB building in Midtown Manhattan, ensconced in the prestigious Attila the Hun chair of the Limbaugh Institute for Advanced Conservative Studies. Rush Limbaugh has a lot to be self-satisfied about. He has the most successful talk show in radio history, an audience of over 18 million people a week on 626 stations. Here is Rush Limbaugh. We are up to day 209 of the Clinton presidency, which has us all in its evil clutches. Limbaugh also has a successful television program, syndicated late at night. And his first book has been a bestseller for over a year. So if Rush Limbaugh is so popular, why do so many people love to hate him? The fact that he's constantly knocking Clinton, I mean, from day one. Anti anything that's good, he's the devil. <laughs> he uh, is someone who caters to the worst prejudices in other people. I walk out here tonight and I heard somebody shout, Overkill! <laughs> and it's because of these ribbons that I am wearing. Here they Limbaugh are. has managed to antagonize liberals, feminists, gays, and environmentalists, among others. The green right here, save the rainforests. <laughs> Political correctness. How do you feel about that? Uh, just another word for totalitarianism. It's just another way for the people predominantly on the left. Liberalism is, is I think political correctness is actually just a new name for liberalism. How do you feel about homosexuals? Well, you know, homosexuals are, are going to exist, and I have uh, no objection to what anybody does in their bedroom, but at the same time, um, I don't want somebody getting in my face and saying, I'm gay, I'm gay. You must like it, you must love me, and you must accept everything I do. I don't get in everybody's face and say, I'm straight, I'm straight. Half my brain tied behind my back just to make it fair, Rush Limbaugh serving humanity in New York on the EIB Network. His talk radio competitor, Larry King, has said Limbaugh is a zealot who's made a career out of bashing people. Nightline's Ted Koppel, who's had Limbaugh as a guest, views him differently. He's extremely irritating. Rush Limbaugh is, I guess, to the left, he is sort of like an aching tooth. Uh, they can't stand him, but they can't leave him alone. And to the right, he's like cotton candy. They just keep gobbling him up. And the supply is prodigious. <laughs> 15 hours a week on the radio, five half hours on television. But that's Limbaugh the performer. For all his broadcast brashness, he carefully guards the private Rush Limbaugh. We wanted to find out what's behind his public face. Will you tell us what it is that you basically believe? I'm a mainstream conservative. I don't consider myself a, a right-wing, although I have, uh, as, I, as I look at the newspaper accounts of my uh, uh, goings and comings, I see that I have come up with a third name, ultra-conservative, Rush Limbaugh. Do you mind? No, I think it's part of the territory. I, I think what I do is shine the light of truth on things. And then the reaction is, well, let's label this guy something that'll discredit him. Let's call him a bigot. Let's call him a racist. Let's call him ultra this or ultra that. Yeah. Do you care? I mean, does it hurt? Uh, I, I've looked at myself as a harmless, lovable little fuzzball. And so, and so now, oh, really, I have no, always, kidding. yeah, I'm just, I'm just touchy feeling. I'm, I'm, I'm not a threat to anybody. In a, in Come a, sit on my lap. I would. Know? I would love to. I've wanted to for the longest time. This is probably the place to bring up one of the most controversial things you've ever said, calling feminists fem-Nazis. And oh. you've said, I love the women's movement, especially when I'm walking behind it. Now, sure. that's kind of funny. But... Yeah, kind of. It's, it's uproariously funny, and it's harmless. To you, it's uproariously funny. Oh, no, okay. it's harmless. Let's just define this for people who say, he calls them fem-Nazis. But I don't. What do you mean? I you don't. Did? Well, oh, I, did. I never did call feminists fem-Nazis. There are a select few feminists who I call feminazis. And you have to really work hard to earn your way into the feminazi status. You know what feminazi really is, is a woman who is so consumed with the advancement of the feminist agenda that she gets mad when a woman who's pregnant, who was going to have an abortion, is talked out of it. And women who think that uh, of all sex is rape, even the sex in marriage, because and women okay, are you're saying extreme. You're sure, saying feminists are extreme. extreme. What about position. when you say uh, feminists are ugly women who need dates? I never said that. Well, sort of. It's you a, said it a little, here, a little more elegant. Well, I'll give it to you. It's, I, I, I once wrote uh, uh, in a newspaper column I had the 35 undeniable truths of life. Number 24, feminism, <laughs> feminism was established so as to allow unattractive women easier access to the mainstream of society. <laughs> 
Well, you know, the, the, I think one of the things that, look, Barbara, this is a, nobody, I, you know, I try to explain this, I don't know how many times. I don't know why it, people don't understand it. It seems so simple well, <laughs> to me. Some Nazis like the good, ugly women. Now, but see, I, I, I have been it. aided and abetted by this continued misrepresentation of what a feminazi is and by the continued misrepresentation of what my views on women are. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it, I am perceived as hating women. Do you? Oh, no. love women. I love yeah. women. What influence do you think you have? Can you make people vote a particular way? Can you really change their views? I can. I can. I think I'm validating. I, I think I am ratifying what people already think, and I think they're happy because I'm one of them. Also, I have fun. I, I combine, I think, two things that are not found anywhere else in the media, television, radio, newspapers. I combine irreverence, sense of humor, with a serious, credible uh, discussion of, of consequential issues. And, and there is no one else who's doing that, left or right. Larry King uh, criticizes you and, and says that you bash gays and you uh, are not as uh, generous in your opinions as you might be. What do you feel about him? I think, in truth, Barbara, if I may be bold, he's just overcome with a little bit of envy and jealousy. And who am I? Nobody ever heard of me five years ago. I've come out of the woodwork uh, and, and have taken over an area that Larry King thought was his by divine right. The Rush Limbaugh of 1993, adored by his fans and successful beyond his wildest dreams, is the product of failure meeting determination. He's been fired from five radio jobs in a career that began in high school. Calvin Chapman was his guidance counselor. He was just so excited about radio. And I never did get him to do all of his homework. Rusty, as Rush Limbaugh III was called then, worked after school at the local radio station in his hometown of Cape Girardeau, Missouri. KGMO, Cape Girardeau. It's a city of 35,000 on the Mississippi River, about 100 miles downstream from St. Louis. But for middle America, it is mainstream. And growing up here, Rush was able to avoid much of what was going on out there. I didn't want to be identified with my generation, Barbara. I didn't wear blue jeans. I still don't. I didn't wear tie-dyes. I didn't protest America. never did. And so I, I wasn't uh, a part of the, the, uh, the, the consensus. He wasn't exactly a loner during high school, but he was shy and overweight. He was no classroom Casanova. Did you ever play spin the bottle and it landed in a girl and she said, <laughs> yeah? Yeah. Okay. Did you I was about, this, this was, uh, uh, let's see, when was this? This was, uh, gosh, junior high. Doesn't everybody play spin the bottle in junior high? Yeah, but it every girl, but, Rush, when it gets to, to the person, the girls don't go, yuck. Oh, I'll bet they do. No, you no, think no. I'm the only guy in no, America that's no, 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 that? No, but you're the only one I'm talking to. The Limbaugh's were pillars of the community. Rusty's father, Rush Jr., was chairman of the county Republican Party and a man with strong political opinions. He died in 1990. And according to his father, Rush Limbaugh Sr., now 102, Rusty adored his dad. He looked up to his father and wanted his father's point of view, and he followed it. He adhered to his father because he believed in him. Rusty disappointed both of his parents when he dropped out of the local college after just a year to pursue a series of radio jobs. My father set me down. He said, what's going to happen, Rush? You're not going to make a decent salary. You're not going to maintain the social standing that you've uh, become accustomed to. You won't find a decent girl to marry. What woman wants to marry a man who can't support her? All he ever did was insist that I get a college degree. And I thought, what's he going to do? Uh, being a disc jockey uh, all his life, he's not going to, you know, but because I knew he could do better. I really did. But for a while, he didn't. His radio career floundered. And in 1979, he left the business to take a sales job with the Kansas City Royals. He stayed five years. I read something that you said then. You said, I have never been lower. I was empty, directionless, futureless. I said, I'm 32 years old and I've blown it. I've got nothing to show for what I have done. I have failed at everything I've done. I've been fired from every job or been forced to quit every job. So flop, 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 flop. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I was always the guy with a lot of potential. 
And a friend of mine said, what do you do best? And I said, well, obviously what I do best is say things on the radio. Well, you've got to do that. You've got to go back to that. I said, no, I already you know, failed at that. I already screwed that up. And um, I nevertheless went back to radio, and I was never better on the radio than after I'd been out of it for five years. And so it just, it really began to blossom um, in 1984 when I moved to Sacramento, California. An immediate action. It was in Sacramento that Limbaugh perfected his format of no guests, some telephone callers, and mostly non-stop host opinion. Let's figure out how much we spend per person on health care. He gets ready for each day's program with three to four hours reading. And even while he's on the air, he keeps up with news and electronic mail from listeners on his laptop computer. But when opportunity knocks, the chance to host a nationally syndicated program from New York, he found the transition difficult. When I came to New York, I was, I was a psychological mess. Uh, the fact is that in Sacramento, I was not just a big fish in a little pond. I was a whale in a bathtub. I mean, I owned the town. So I assumed there'd be some fanfare with the arrival. And there was none. Sacramento, where's that? You're going to do your show nationally? Who cares? And for the first six months, I was nobody. And in, in uh, the business you and I are in, being nobody is tantamount to being a failure. But his okay, career okay, blossomed okay. in New York with stunning professional and financial success. Even his father stopped worrying. Your father lived to see you successful. He did. Mm -hmm. He did. Wildest uh, uh, imaginations probably were surpassed in the degree that he saw me. But He saw you one night on Ted Koppel. Saw me on Nightline. Uh, it was my first time. It was exactly one month before he died. And uh, so when the show was over, I talked to my mom that, later that night, and uh, she told me how proud he was. His dad turned around to me and he said, where did he get all that? How does he know this? <laughs> and I said, well, he got it from you. <laughs> and uh, it really pleased him. But as his public following grew, Limbaugh's personal life did not keep pace. After the microphones and cameras shut down, he seemed to as well. He's very shy. He's uh, very sweet. Roger Ailes is Limbaugh's television producer and his friend. He uh, sometimes uh, comes across as uh, more brusque than he intends. Insecure? We're all insecure. I think Rush uh, um, wants to be loved. You also had two marriages that yes. were bust. Yes, yes. Why? Married uh, uh, for wrong reasons, I think. Uh, the best of intentions for the wrong reasons. Were you a good husband? Well, I think I was. I, absolutely. I think I'm, I think I'm one of the best catches waiting now. I think, I, I think I'm one of the best kept, so oh, really, when it comes to husbands, I think I'm one of the best kept secrets in America. Your first wife said that you were so intent on your work, there was nothing left for anyone else. Your second wife, Michelle, said you were a couch potato. Look, you're, you're identifying a lament that is common throughout most marriages uh, at some point or relationships, and that is someone, either the husband or wife, is not paying enough attention. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, men, uh, I, I do think that men define their self-esteem by virtue of their careers. I think most women define their self-esteem or take it from the success of their relationship, their family, or their marriage. Yeah, thank God for Rush Limbaugh. But these days, Limbaugh seems to prefer career women. He isn't seen often on the social circuit, but when he is, it's usually with women who've made a name for themselves. Anyone you want to meet? You know... I was wondering, I was going to ask you, mm -hmm. I may as well do it now, I was going to ask you if you could arrange maybe for me to meet Joan London. I mean, I've met her, mm -hmm. but, you know. You can't pick up the phone and say, hello, Joan? I Mrs. probably Rush? could, but what is it? Look, you could probably put in a good word for me. Say so that say, he's not a I bad guy. Yeah, yeah, he's a harmless, lovable little fuzzball. I'll call Joan for you and tell her that you're a harmless, lovable little, little, little fuzzball. fuzzball. Yeah. Keep up the great work. Will do. There are a lot of people who think Limbaugh's lovability could translate into politics. I don't. You know why? Because you are right. We love you. Thank you. Love thank, you. thank you very much. Rush, you want to ever be in politics? No. As sitting here today telling you this, I have no desire to go into politics. You could be politics. very effective that way. I can't see the doing the basic thing one has to do in politics. Which is? Put your hand out and ask people to put something in it. Money. When money is in your hand, 
people want to pay back, and it's never with money. And it just, it's, it's say goodbye to independence. It's say goodbye to who you are. With all the stuff that's written about you, and all of the stuff that you say people make up, and so on, what's the biggest misconception? They can't discredit my views, Barbara. They can't discredit my, my discovery of the truth, because it's not based on anything mm -hmm. phony. But boy, if they can label me as some kind of oddball, uh, somebody in a childhood, my father beat me, or I'm still on a mission to prove my father yeah. wrong and all this, I am a threat to a specific group of people in this, in this country known as liberals. I don't want to be a threat. I don't think they should feel threatened. If they do, it must be because I'm saying things about... It's only the truth that hurts, Barbara. It's only the truth. Say something lovable and modest, please. <laughs> Just please say something modest. So, <laughs> I, for, for, I have for about an hour. So, <laughs> I can't remember. Uh, uh, something uh, modest about uh, why my show is a success? About anything. No, I, can, I, can, I can credit it to the good taste and refinement of the American people. Well, this Sunday in the Chicago ceremony, Rush will be inducted into the Radio Hall of Fame. And then there's Mad Magazine. Its readers recently voted him the winner of a poll to name the celebrity they think should receive, quote, unnecessary root canal work. Taste, as they say, is in the eye of the beholder, or should we say, the ear. You may love him or hate him, but the one thing about Rush Limbaugh is, once you have heard him, you can't ignore him. We'll be right back. Hey, you can see why new Ripple Crisp cereal is not the same old flake. Ordinary flakes are flat. They meet milk, the crunch goes downhill. Ripple Crisp is different. Only Ripple Crisp has ripples. See? Ripples keep it crunchier. And crunchier means you can savor that lightly sweet corn taste down to the bottom of the bowl. New Ripple Crisp. Golden corn or honey bran. Ripples make it crunchy. Crunchy makes it good. Hey, where's the picture? There's no picture. Did you see the picture come out? How can that be a Polaroid camera if there's no picture? It doesn't look like a Polaroid camera. It's not a Polaroid camera. Introducing the new Polaroid Captiva. It's sleek, it's stylish. Its pocket-sized pictures stay in a special compartment until you take them out, so you're free to shoot and shoot. Maybe if you shake it. Yeah, shake the camera. The new Polaroid Captiva. The pictures stay in until you take them out. A1. When California banned assault weapons, one manufacturer found a way to get this weapon out on the street. Very deadly. Very legal. How could this happen? Forrest Sawyer on day one, Monday at 8, 7 central. He's been called the most dangerous man in America. So why do millions of people love to listen to Rush Limbaugh? America's number one talk show host talks to Barbara Walters about his public image, his private life. When 2020 continues, after this, from our AB... His private part. Did justice serve this innocent man? The only good thing that came out of this is my dad's alive, but he's sick. He's very sick. Catherine Cryer with the story of Fidel Lopez, robbed of his health, his business, and the American dream. A year and a half after the L.A. riots, he's still the forgotten victim. Those stories tonight, November 5th, 1993, after this brief message. So when Grandpa retired, the seller list, how did he do it? What's he like away from the microphones? Rush, as you've never seen him, after this. Have your head in the club. Evening, I'm Barbara Walters. Hugh Downs is on assignment, and this is 2020. From ABC News, around the world and into your home. The stories that touch your life with Hugh Downs and Barbara Walters. This is 2020. Tonight, crime in America. In your neighborhood, is there any way to stop it? You can run, but you can't hide. You have to face it. She was a victim. Just move it! Now, she's fighting back. I'm out there to make sure nobody else is a victim. She to a specific group of people in this, in this country known as liberals. And his private life. I'm perceived as hating. Do you? Where he came from and where he's going. 
You want to ever be in politics? The man America loves and loves to hate, Rush Limbaugh. Plus, the riots in Los Angeles were shocking. So were the latest verdicts. The mob that attacked Reginald Denny found another victim that night. He was brutally beaten and publicly humiliated. They sprayed this black graffiti stuff all over. Patrols at night, challenging drug dealers, gang members, places that attract prostitutes. They're disturbing us, they're disturbing our business. We don't like that. Tom Gerald and a woman who's fed up with fear. She's out there on the front lines, taking back the streets. He's in a class by himself. A media megastar with millions of fans, millions of dollars, and talent on loan from God. The wildly successful talk show host, Rush Limbaugh. He's the devil. Barbara Walters explores his public image. I am a threat 